Hello there, Ray here. We are here on Project, and today we've got a really long term project going on. And this is a project we probably started a couple years ago, but I'd like to give you some progress to it. Uh, what we have is this hole here, you've probably seen it, especially if you've been watching our live streams. And this hole goes out to our new Wither Skeleton Farm. So, our old Wither Skeleton Farm is like 18,000 blocks that direction in the nether, so it's quite far. And that one was a really quick one. We pretty much found a nether fortress that was above a huge lava lake, making almost a perfect perimeter. And we went in and we built a farm there and got a bunch of skulls. Now this farm here is in a more ideal location. Um, what we did is we searched out for weather skeleton farms and we found this one. Um, but yeah, pretty much we got this minecart system that's going to take us there. And uh, it's quite a long ride. I think it's 2,000 one direction, 1,000 other direction. Not as long far as the other one. But um, pretty much I got some old footage of us talking about the farm and working on the farm. And I'm going to play that now. Keep in mind the footage is pretty old. Then we'll go over and see what we all complete over there. Over here at our fortress farm. Uh, this is out pretty far. So this fortress farm is out about negative 2,000, 1,000. It's quite a bit closer though than the other one, our temporary one, which is about 18,000 from spawn. Uh, the nice thing about this one is this one has a bunch of intersections all in a row. So Magnix made a program that can search for multiple intersections in a row. And we ran the program and we found this one, which has four intersections all straight connected to each other in a row. And this allows us to have more opportunity to kind of change out what type of farm we want to put in here. We don't have to go with just one that uses nether brick, like some of the ones I've shown in my videos. We can also go for ones that also use like ice to move them across. Now in doing all the searching, this one seemed to be about the closest with the most intersections. So it's the one that we chose and it's really not too far yet to spawn. Uh, nice thing about this one is that it actually has a stronghold over in the overall side. So we can easily get to that. Now with this fortress here, unlike the other one where we found, which was mostly completely shrouded in lava. Here we have to remove some lava lakes as well as a whole bunch of netherrack as you can see. So there's a lot of netherrack around here as well as other materials to make a nice perimeter. Uh, this one, like unlike our last one, which was a kind of a quick one and a simple one, this one's going to be our best with our skeleton farm. So we want to make sure the perimeter is nice and clean. Uh, during some testing, with the Meganex, he made a program that kind of tests and see how the game allows mobs to spawn. And we found out that if we remove all the material above, including the bedrock, in that case, we can actually get the mobs to spawn lower down, increasing the spawn rates. So pretty much if we remove the bedrock ceiling, as you've seen in my Wither Skeleton Farm videos, we can lower down, making it more likely for them to spawn down here inside of the farm. So we want to go ahead and do that. Uh, what we got over here is a little base of startup. And this is just a iron cage to prevent gas from attacking us. Uh, we now do have a nether switch, so another mob switch that we have the mobs turned off so they don't have to come and attack us. We've got some more supplies here. And we also got the railway system, which I took to get here. Um, it just goes all the way back to our nether hub. And then this row goes here so you can sleep in case you die uh, because this next part you can die in. So if we go up here, we'll go all the way up to where the bedrock ceiling is. We have went ahead and poked a hole into it so that we can have access from the bottom all the way up to the top. We also started removing the bedrock. So our options for moving bedrock are quite a few since the server is still in 1.8. And uh, we choose to use the vine method because it is kind of a cool method that we can easily do with multiple people all at once. And it's really nice. So this method is only in 1.8 versions. And pretty much what we can do is use vines with beds. And if we like place a bed up against this vine here, you can see that we can destroy the bedrock with this. Um, we didn't want to do it manually. So we went ahead and discovered some ways to automate this process. Uh, so I'm going to hop over in our creative world. So here in our creative world, we came up with a way to automate this process. We made a couple different designs. This is kind of the one that works the best. 
Um, it's kind of simple, plus it also gets the job done. So the player would AFK here, and you would sit in here with a couple beds in your inventory. Then you would click against top of this vine, and what it's going to do is to remove the bedrock underneath of it, as well as the vine. Then it's going to go ahead and update this piston, which is being budded from this redstone block. And then it's going to push it over here, and then it's going to um, come ahead, and then this one's going to push it forward, and this one's going to reset it. Let's just watch that. Let's go in here, place down one vine. It's a little bit hard to aim, but you place it right there. And as you see, it kind of pushed itself forward and then reset. And it also removed the bedrock that was there. Um, I can remove this one so you can see. And pretty much what we did is we go ahead and place down all the vines. Then we come in and we kind of semi AFK, kind of AFK too, but um, there's a chance that with the server, you will get it so that you will um, end up clicking on the bed, which causes it to explode. I'll show that in a bit. So yeah, you can kind of sit here and you can have a couple of different beds in your inventory. And then what you do is, or you can even just use one. You can click and then the, the bed will come back in your uh, inventory and then you can click again. And yeah, you can just keep going along and breaking bedrock like this. Now, while we were doing testing here, uh, Galea actually discovered it's possible to break bedrock just by using two beds and not even using any vines. It was really strange and we tested it and it only works in multiplayer. What essentially happens is that this piston extends and it will break this end of the bed. And then when that happens, you can click a new bed up against this bed here and it will break this bedrock. And pretty much um, then this bed will pop off and then this bed will just sit here. and. It's uh, pretty difficult to perform, and I only got it to work in multiplayer, like I said. And it's not consistent enough for us to actually use. Otherwise, this could be like an infinite bedrock breaking method, um, since you don't have to waste any vines. There, you've seen I was able to perform it. Uh, even though this is in single player world, I was able to get it to work. And yeah, pretty much you can see how it works there. So to build this up, after we got all the vines placed down, we uh, just come in with some slime in here. And this is the slime that's going to kind of move the player along and also going to break the bed. And then we also have some slime above to try and keep the bed from flying around. So sometimes the bed will pop off, it'll fly kind of upwards. And that's what this does, it kind of contains it. And then uh, back here we'll have the other piece, the piece that pushes it forward. And then we have the redstone block up here. Now what we have to do is put in these blocks to move the forward, uh, move the player forward as well as break off the bed. And we'll put the rail there and the minecart there. And that's pretty much all there is to it. Then you just hop in here and you AFK by clicking like this. Uh, one thing you do have to keep in mind is that sometimes the game thinks that you clicked on the bed and causes an explosion. So I'll tell you, try to aim a little bit off to the side. This doesn't happen. Otherwise, you can sit here and kind of hold it down. And yeah, if you have good connection, you're able to move across pretty easily without having any problems. If you do have bad connection, then you may end up thinking that you've clicked on the bed, and then in which case, the bed explodes. Uh, that's why I'm not wearing any armor, because if I blow up, I just don't want to lose my stuff, so I just die. And then I just come back because of the portal over there. Yeah, it's a nice way to just AFK and break bedrock and 1.8. And once you get to the end, you can just tear down this little machine and then repeat the process by putting down the vines. And then, yeah, pretty much continue on the process. Um, if you do have problems with like lower layers of going ahead and your slimestone like connecting to pieces and stuff, then you can always come in here and remove these uh, nether racks if you want to. You kind of see we did that over on this side. Also, if you have trouble with mobs spawning on there, you can do that as well. Yeah, it's a pretty simple method, and we can pretty much take down the bedrock layer by layer all the way across, and we can um, easily have multiple people working on this all at once, kind of while, while also being like AFK. Um, it's pretty relaxing.
all the bedrock was removed, as you can see. And now this size here is representing the area of the bounty box of the nether fortress, which is down below. So the area that the game tries to put this nether fortress in, and pretty much where the mobs will spawn if they are on top of nether brick, is pretty much the area where we removed all the bedrock. So it comes out to be like a square. So the area in which we removed bedrock is a 13 by 13 chunk area. And pretty much every layer of bedrock has a chance on average to be about three bedrock thick. This would make it so there's about 130,000 bedrock in this area that had to be removed. Also, this is just the area on which we have it so that we remove the bedrock so we can have lower spawns underneath of here. And that is also where the bounty box is. Doesn't necessarily mean where the perimeter will be. We will move the perimeter back a bit just so we have an area so that there is no spawns in any of the other spawning spaces near the player. That way we can change the size of the farm if we want to. We don't have to put it right here where these four intersections are. If we want to, we can go with like a nether brick farm, kind of like the ones I've shown in the past, come up with some other designs, and then can put it off to the side or something like that. So we've got a lot of options to do with this. Now we did have to remove all four layers of bedrock. Obviously the top layer is the thickest. And then as you move down, it gets thinner and thinner and thinner. Um, I think top layer, the first three layers, we pretty much went ahead and just use beds to remove everything. So like for the bottom layer, we kind of did like a spot bedrock breaking where we came in and kind of individually broke the bedrock. I don't have any footage of us actually doing it, but it did take quite a while for us to come in here and do this um, different parts. It was a really big group project. It took a lot of people to pull this off. We had to bring all the materials over here and get everything set up. So the materials we had to bring over was all the dragon eggs, all the slime stone, and we had like picks and food and uh, pearls and a bunch of other stuff. We also had to bring like flint and steel to activate the machines in case we wanted to move them aside. Um, we also had to remove fire because the fire was coming in and destroying the vines. Also, if there's lava pockets underneath, those are also coming in and starting fires to start the vines on fire. So that's one of the downsides to having the vines being used to break the bedrock. You can see in the scoreboard, it shows how many beds were used. This is approximately how many beds were used in this area because this is the majority of where we were using beds to break bedrock. And that is a lot of beds. Like I said, 100, about 130,000 beds would have been used. Uh, we did use this flying machine to break some of the bedrock, but overall I think the beds were just more relaxing and easier to use than trying to come in here and place dragon eggs onto this flying machine. But the guys did build this up and give it a couple tries. I think they ran across here. It works pretty good for like the top layers and stuff, but you start getting down to the bottom layers, it's almost easier to use beds to break it than it is to come in here and put up dragon eggs every single layer. Then you still had to come in afterwards and remove all the dragon eggs before dropping another layer. You had to do this five times to remove all five layers. So here's the scoreboard for the amount of vines that were used. Pretty much every bedrock you had placed on one vine. So you can kind of correlate how many vines were being placed on this area to remove all the bedrock. So if you go to the overall while being inside of the nether perimeter, you'd come up really close to the stronghold here. And this is really nice because we have an entrance end portal. And we're going to use this so that we can transport the items from our Wither Skelter farm into the end dimension. And then from the end dimension, we can easily put them through the exit end portal, which will take us directly to spawn. So even though our Wither Skelter farm is like 2,000 by 1,000 away from the nether hub, quite far out, and even here in the overall, it's even further out, we're close to 16,000 blocks away from spawn, we can easily get there as well as getting our items there without much effort while sending them through the end dimension. So this is a really cool idea and kind of how we incorporated this whole farm and designed it up so we can easily transport the items there. This is quite a large project to come in here and remove all the bedrock so we get better spawns for our Wither Skeleton Farm. Now we did try to find ways, as always, to come in and try to automate the process to make it easier for ourselves. These large projects are only possible because of the participations of all the members. We like to check out all the other members that are part of ProTech. All their links are down in the description. A lot of them do also put out YouTube videos as well as other content you'll find across the internet. So the next thing we have to do for our perimeter here is to come in and remove all the material so we have a nice clean area to put in our farm. That way we don't have mobs spawning anywhere but besides inside of our farm. So stay tuned for our next episode where we're going to remove all this netherrack and this whole entire perimeter while being AFK. But that's going to be all for today. So thank you guys for joining. And have fun in survival. Bye bye.